welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar in this lecture we continue studying the at sandhi or the vowel sandhi we have noted that ach sandhi is classified broadly under two heads ekasthanika ekadesha and dvisthanika ekadesha and we are studying the ekasthanika ekadesha what this means is that there is one substitute ek adesha in place of one substituent ekasthanik ekadesha and we noted that there are two instances of this type of sandhi the first one is yan sandhi and the second one is ayavayav sandhi and we have been studying the yan sandhi in some detail now and we shall study the dvisthanik ekadesha later on after we finish the second instance namely ayavayava sandhi and its study the diagrammatic representation of ekasthanika ekadesha is as follows here you have a in close proximity with b so you have a plus b b is the right hand side environment and a is substituted by c a plus b is the input and c plus b is the output a is the substituent the sthani and c is the substitute and the adesha this first type of sutras are stated in this section from 6172 onwards up to 6183 and as we saw earlier we have been studying the yan sandhi the first instance of ekasthanika ekadesha we have studied the sutra eko yanachi we also studied the expanded meaning of eko yanachi when we apply the uddeshya vidheya bhav and we apply the sutra anudit savarnasya cha pratyaya in the meaning of ego yanachi then we also noted the criterion for selection of substitute then we looked at individual examples then we are discussing various other related aspects we continue the discussion and today we shall deal with the interrelation between the swara sutras and the yan sandhi this is an extremely important topic related to the yan sandhi yan sandhi is an input to the real rules dealing with the accent i repeat yan sandhi yan sandhi is an input to the rules dealing with the accent or swara in both situations within a pada a pada internal and between two padas or external sandhi in this particular lecture we shall focus on these two sutras which are primarily the internal yan sandhi based sutras dealing with accent the first one is 61174 udatta yano hal purvat and the second one is 824 udatta svarita yoho yanah svarito anudattasya let us look at the meanings of these sutras and the examples in detail first of all let us try to study two derivations one of which would be the example of these two sutras and the other one 
would be the one for contrast. So here we have the verbal root cru and we are deriving the agentive form derived from verbal root cru after adding the suffix truch. So we have cru plus truch added by 3 1 1 30, 3. Then by 133 3 and 139, we get cru plus tru. Then by 7384, cru becomes kar, and we have kar plus tru, and so we get the form kar tru. In all these steps, there isn't any accent mark shown, which is quite obvious because both elements in the process they possess one that the accent which is always unmarked as far as the Rig Vedic writing accent writing pattern is concerned. So Kri plus Trich and we have both vowels unmarked both vowels Udatta. And then when we join them together it is this accent which is retained and so this Udatta gets converted into an Anudatta. So we have the form kartru with the final final vowel udat, ru being udat. So k is shown as anadat. The meaning of this word is one who does, which is a doer. Kartru means a doer. Now let us take a look at the derivation shown on the right hand side of the slide. The derivation is same except the marker in the suffix. Here it is trun and the sutra is different. It is 3, 2, 1, 35. This suffix trun is also an agentive suffix, but there are some additional shades of meanings like tachila, tadharma, and tatsadhukari. One whose habit it is, or one whose skill it is, and so on. So, we have kru plus trun, once again 133 3 and 139 play a role and we have kru plus tru, then we have 7384 and we have kar plus tru and then <coughs> as before all these elements they are accented, they have udatta accent but at this particular final stage the accent of this element was going to remain but because of the marker n now the initial vowel gets accented. So this initial vowel is accented now and so we have kartru with an initial udatta and ru as anudatta and this anudatta comes immediately after an udatta and therefore this anudatta is converted into a svarita udatta danudattasya svaritaha and so there is a svarita mark vertical bar on top of ru. This is what is kartru with initial vowel udatta. The meaning over here is one who does yes but one who, whose habit it is to do. That means a skilled doer. So that is the meaning difference. If you have initial vowel udatta in this form kartru, the meaning is going to be a skilled doer and if the final vowel is going to be udatta in this form, the meaning is just a doer, doer of an action, that's all. These meaning differences brought about by the accents are extremely important for us to study the accent based on the yan sandhi later on in this lecture. It is important to see now when we add certain suffixes to these two forms, how the other forms are derived. Let us first of all look at the forms derived of the word kartru with the final vowel being udatta, like this. So kartru has got this final vowel udatta. Remember, this means that this is derived by adding the suffix trich, and the meaning of this form is just a doer. So how would the subanta forms of this pratipadika figure? They are stated on this particular slide. Karta, kartarau, kartaraha, 
कर्तारम कर्तार कर्तृन कर्तरा कर्तृभ्या कर्तृभि कर्त्रे कर्तृभ्या कर्तृभ्य कर्तु कर्तृभ्या कर्तृभ्य कर्तु कर्तो कर्तृण कर्तरी कर्तो कर्तृष दीज आर द फॉर्म्स डिराइव्ड अमंग्स दैम देर आर फोर फॉर्म्स विच आर मार्क्ड इन ब्लू कर्तरा कर्त्रे कर्तो एंड ऑल्सो कर्तो दीज आर पिक्यूलियर एंड ऑफ अवर इंटरेस्ट वेर वी आर स्टडिंग द इंटर रिलेशन बिटवीन द यन संधि स्टेटिंग रूल एंड द एक्सन स्टेटिंग रूल्स हेयर इज द सूत्र उदात्त यणो हल पूर्वात सिक्स वन वन हंड्रेड एंड सेवेंटी फोर विच प्लेज अ वेरी क्रुशल रोल इन ब्रिंगिंग अबाउट द एक्सन इन दीज फॉर्म्स सो द मीनिंग ऑफ द सूत्र इज स्टेटेड ओवर हियर वॉट दिस सूत्र मीन्स इज दैट द विभक्ति सफिक्सेस नोन एज असर्वनाम स्थान मीनिंग देर बाय दैट दे स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द सिक्स केस इन दिस केस एंड एलिमेंट्स नोन एज नदी विच कम इमीडिएटली आफ्टर अ यंग सब्सटीट्यूशन which is after a consonant in place of an udatta vowel then such an asarvanama sthana vibhakti or a nadi they are substituted by an udatta vowel let me read again the vibhakti suffixes known as asarvanama sthana that is starting from the sixth in this particular case and elements known as nadi these elements are substituted by an udatta vowel when they come immediately after a yan substitution in place of an udatta vowel and this yan substitution should be after a consonant here is an example kartru plus a and then there is a yan sandhi taking place so this ru becomes r we have kartru plus a and then kartra plus a and we join it together and we have kartra remember this a is marked as anudatta over here but in this particular step it is marked as udatta and as a result this final a is marked as udatta this is what we showed on this previous slide by the blue inked forms kartra this final a is udat this final a is udat this os is udat and similarly this os is also udat so what is the explanation of udat yano hal purvat this is the explanation any sub suffix is stated to be anudat by default by the sutra anudatta usupitau so the suffixes over here including a a os and os all of them they are anudat but they are stated to be udat by 61174 if and only if the suffix comes after one it should come after a yan substitution obviously whose substituent is an ik which is udat so this ik should be udat and then this ik should be substituted by a yan and also this yan substitution is preceded by a consonant so if we take a look at this example once again we note that we have kartru plus a and we have kartr plus a this is the place where yan sandhi takes place here we have kartru with the final ru as udat and therefore k is marked as anudat a is a sub suffix so it is marked as anudat now because of this a this ru is getting substituted by r so we have kartr plus a now 61174 applies and says that this a is to be 
substituted by an udat a. This is unmarked and this is an udat a. And so we join this together and we get the form kartra where a is udat. A even when stated as anudat by default by anudat usupitau because of 61174 where yarn sandhi comes into play as a condition this a becomes udat. So we get kartra with final udat, kartre also final udat, kartroho kartroho final vowel being udat. Here we see that ru obviously is ik. It is also udat here. We know why because this is the truch suffix. Now this ru is coming after t. So this is ru, this is t. And by 6177 it is substituted by yan. That yan in this case is r. After which a which is anudat. Now by the application of 61174 this a becomes udat. In this way the forms kartra, kartre, kartroho can be explained. Here the sutra 61174 plays a very crucial role which takes 6177 as an input. Now if we look at the forms of the word kartru with initial udatta vowel, this will be a contrast and this word kartru is derived by adding the suffix trun. The meaning of this word is a skilled doer. In this case the initial vowel is udatta. So the other vowels they are anudatta. So here we have kartra in which the initial vowel is udat, this vowel is anudat kartru followed by another anudat vowel a. Now there is yan sandhi, ru getting substituted by r, but this yan is not in place of an udat vowel. This is in place of an anudat vowel. And therefore, this anudat a does not get substituted by an udat a as happened in the previous example. This is the contrast. Similar thing happens in kartre and kartroho and kartroho. So, in all these forms, the final vowel remains anudat. Kartra a is anudat, but this anudat comes immediately after an udat. Therefore, this anudatta gets converted into a swarita by the sutra udatta anudattasya swaritaha. Similarly, kartre and you have this anudatta vowel A which gets converted into a swarita because this anudatta comes immediately after an udatta. Similarly, in kartroho and kartroho, this O which is anudatta and this comes after the yan r which has come in place of the anudatta ru and therefore this is termed in this is converted into a swarita by udatta udatta anudattasya swaritaha this is how the forms of kartru meaning the skilled doer dif differ from the forms of kartru meaning just a doer and udatta yano halpurvat applies in case of the word kartru meaning just a doer than in the word meaning a skilled doer. So even though yan sandhi has taken place over here, it is not in place of an udatta ik and therefore udatta yano halpurvat does not apply here. Now let us look at the feminine form derived from the word kartru. This will be the example of the nadi form also mentioned in udatta yano halpurvat. We looked at the examples kartra etc. They are the asarvanamasthana vibhaktis and ngip is the nadi termed 
element. Neep is marked with the marker P whose function it is to show that this Ni or E is Anudatta by the Sutra Anudattau Suppitau. Now you have the word Kartru once again with the final Ru being Udatta. So this means a doer, just a doer. And now you want to derive a form with the feminine gender information added to it. So you want to say she who is a doer. And so you have the word Kartru, you add the suffix Gneep by 415 Rudne Bhyongneep. And so here this E is Anudatta by default, this Ru is Udatta. Now there is a Yan Sandhi that is happening in place of an Udatta vowel. So this Ru gets substituted by R over here. Now 61174 applies and because this is a Yan Sandhi in place of an Udatta vowel, this Anudatta becomes an Udatta by 61174. This is a Nadi and this becomes Udatta. So we have Kartra plus E, E being Udatta and finally we get the form Kartri with the final vowel being Udatta. She who is a doer. Similarly, if we look at this derivation, we have Kartru initial vowel Udatta followed by Neep. So Kartru has got initial vowel Udatta Anma, E is Anudatta by default by the Sutra Anudatta Supitau. Once again there is Yan Sandhi but now this Yan happens in place of an Anudatta vowel which comes immediately after an Udatta therefore it is converted into a Swarita but this Anudatta and this Anudatta gets the substitute Yan and so now 61174 does not apply and this E is not converted into a, an Udatta vowel. So it retains its Anudatta status and once again we have the initial vowel Udatta and this Kartri where Ka is Udatta means she who is a skillful doer. So in one form where long E is Udatta in Kartri the meaning is just who is a doer, she who is a doer and where the initial vowel is Udatta the meaning is she who is a skillful doer. This is the difference that is brought about by the Yan Sandhi and the Sutra Udatta Yano Halpurvat to which Yan Sandhi acts as an input. Now when we derive the Pada forms from the feminine form Kartri, this, this is how the Sutras apply and the forms happen. So for example, we are right now looking at the word Kartri which has got the final vowel Udatta which is derived from the word Kartru which has got the final Ru Udatta. Now this E is Udatta followed by the sub suffixes which are by default Anudatta. So we have Kartri plus Au, Au being Udatta and then some other rule Udatta Svarita Yor Yana Svarito Anudatta Sya comes into play and converts this Anudatta into a Svarita. So there are these three forms showed in blue ink which are subjected to the application of the Sutra Udatta Svarita Yor Yana Svarito Anudatta Sya and Yan Sandhi is the input for this particular Sutra. Then we have these forms shown in the green colors in which once again Udatta Yanohal Purvat applies and so the final vowel becomes Udatta. Kartriya, Kartriye, Kartriyaha, Kartriyaha, Kartriyoho, Kartriyau and Kartriyoho. In contrast, if we study the forms in contrast, if we study the forms derived by the from the word Kartri with an initial vowel being Udatta, which means that this word Kartri is derived by adding the suffix Trin, 
to the verbal root crew and the meaning of this form is a skilled doer she who is a skilled doer the verb the word forms of this kartri are of the following nature kartri everywhere you have the initial vowel being udat now kartriyau etc the long e which is anudat gets substituted by a yan followed by au which is also an anudat but because this yan sandhi has not taken place in place of an udat vowel no sutra applies over here the ones that we have seen udat neither udat yano hal purvat udat yano hal purvat obviously has no scope over here but udat swarita yor yana swarita anudat tasya does not apply here and so we don't get this swarita <coughs> as swatantra swarita this is a swarita but this is primarily an anudat which comes immediately after this udat and therefore it is a swarita now in none of the other forms like kartriya kartri etc we see that there is this udat vowel being substituted by yan and therefore the by default anudat vowel getting converted by an udat vowel that is not happening over here in all the forms of this we have the initial vowel being accented this is for the sake of contrast so here is the sutra udatta swaritayor yana swarito anudattasya what this means is an anudatta vowel which comes immediately after the yan substitution which replaces an udatta or a swarita vowel so that anudatta vowel is substituted by a swarita vowel i repeat an anudatta vowel is substituted by a swarita vowel an anudatta vowel is substituted by a swarita vowel if this anudatta vowel comes immediately after the yan substitution which replaces an udatta or a swarita vowel so here we have kartri with the final vowel being udatta followed by au with anudat accent shown with the horizontal bar below the letter and so now eko yanachi applies and this e gets substituted by y so now you have kartriya plus au so this y has come in place of an udat e and so this sutra 824 applies over here and we have kartriya plus au and this au which is an anudat gets converted into a swarita and this k remains an anudat but this au is the swarita this is how it is shown kartriya so k is anudat au is swarita which is considered to be the swatantra swarita kartriya the explanation of this sutra is this any sub suffix is stated to be anudatta by default but it is stated to be swarita by 824 if and only if it comes after a yan substitution whose substituent is an ik which is an udatta vowel also the scope of application of this sutra is the sarvanama sthana vibhakti which is the first five suffixes udatta yano hal purvat applies in the asarvanama sthana vibhakti that is beginning with the sixth suffix now in this example kartri plus au where you have final vowel being udatta followed by au and kartriyav is derived this is an explanation here au is anudatta shown by horizontal bar this is preceded by e which is udat and if you look at the history of this e you will also find that initially this e was anudat but this e got converted into anudat 
by the application of 61174 because when this E appears in the environment of this E the following Ru vowel which is Udat was substituted by Yan which is a R therefore this E gets converted into an Udat vowel. Now this E gets substituted by the substitution Yan in this case it is Y and so now this Au is substituted by a Svarita. This is how it is shown with the vertical bar on top. So we have Kartreu with a Svarita on top of Au. We also observed that Udatta Yanohal Purvat applies in case of the Vibhakti forms from the instrumental onwards where we derive the form Kartriya in this particular fashion Kartri plus A where you had Kartri with E as Udatta followed by A which is an Anudatta and now because this E which is an Udatta gets substituted by Yan that is Y then this A which was Anudatta earlier is now substituted by an Udatta A and so we have the form Kartriya with the final vowel being Udatta which is a Sup and therefore which is originally stated to be Anudatta but now because of the application of 61174 Udatta Yanohal Purvat this becomes Udatta. To summarize what we have seen so far, the accent that was stated on the suffix tru records different meaning conditions. In case of truch, the meaning is just a doer. In case of trun, the meaning is a skilled doer. And the different accent is also provided by Panini to indicate this change of meaning. And then the Pratipudika gets derived with these features of different meaning as well as different accent even though the word form looks similar. And the difference in accent is also visible when a feminine suffix is added. In one case because the vowel ru which is udat gets substituted by yan and in other case vowel ru which is anudat which gets substituted by yan. So, the word in which vowel ru was udatta and got substituted by yan, feminine suffix becomes udatta and the word in which the vowel ru was not udatta and got substituted by yan, neep or e does not become udatta. This is the difference of accent that is also visible when a feminine suffix is added. And then when we derive the pada forms of these words in the feminine suffix, the same accent also plays a very crucial role as far as the final accent of the final pada is concerned. And we have studied this in detail in this particular lecture. To conclude, we can say that this is how history of an accent in the derivation process plays a crucial role in explaining accent at different levels. And most importantly, this is how the Yan Sandhi becomes an input for accent rules. Thank you for your attention.